Just a few days ago, we finally got to see the first gameplay from Destiny 2, and there's a lot of excitement going around, from currently Destiny 1 players, but also new players alike. The game looks very familiar, however. It's definitely had a polish, and graphically, it looks better than the original, especially on PC, but the class system is very much the same. You'll recognise certain abilities like the Golden Gun, and even the menu system is very similar to Destiny 1 as well. This is not a complete reimagining of Destiny, it's evolution rather than revolution and providing the new content is good, which from what I've played so far I think it is, I'm fine with that. There's so much to talk about when it comes to Destiny 2, but I wanted to start with PC stuff first because I think that's where my main audience is, and I think that's definitely the platform that I'll be playing Destiny 2 on, and I think it's going to be the best, there's no question about it, and I know that a lot of you watching will be playing on PC as well. At an event recently, we weren't able to capture PC gameplay, but we were able to play it. We could play Campaign, The Strike and Crucible on PC, all in glorious 60fps 4K resolution with a mouse and keyboard. And let me tell you something, it is so nice to play Destiny with a mouse and keyboard above 30 frames per second, if not a bit strange at first. Now the first thing you're probably thinking is, whoa, 60 FPS, is that a cap? Well, yes and no. For this event, we were playing at 4K on PC, capped at 60 FPS, but the final release will have an uncapped frame rate, so we'll be able to play at 120 hertz, 144 hertz, whatever you want, it's going to be glorious. And let me tell you, side by side, when you compare the PC version to the console version, it is night and day. The build that we played also had no field of view slider, I did check that, but I was also told by multiple sources that the game will have an FOV slider on release. It just wasn't in that build of the game. And just as an FYI, I checked the PS4 version as well to see if that had any FOV options, because I know a lot of console games are doing that now, and in the build we played, it did not. It's relatively hard for me to judge this PC build because although it was lacking some PC specific features, especially mouse features and certain graphic settings, it's by all accounts an older build of the game and they really want the PC version to be a proper PC version and not just a port. Currently there was no raw mouse input or vSync settings but hopefully that will be added in just like the field of view slider that they're planning. That being said there is no info on exactly what range the FOV slider will allow. I'm hoping hoping for at least up to 90 as a maximum. The game did look absolutely fantastic on PC though, running at 4K, and there was a wealth of PC graphical settings there such as anti-aliasing, motion blur, texture quality, foliage detail, shadow quality, depth of field, ambient occlusion, environmental detail, and the list goes on and on. It looked great, but even still it wasn't running maxed out. The game that I played was running on medium settings for the most part, and it wouldn't let me increase them in the options. That could be because they wanted to ensure that it kept a 60fps stable while running at 4K, but I expect that when we can see the game maxed out on PC, people will be very, very impressed at how good it looks, and just how smooth it is and how it feels compared to the console version, because as we know, even though this is coming out on PS4, PS4 Pro, Scorpio and Xbox One, it's limited to 30 frames per second on all of the console, which I think is a big mistake from Bungie, but we'll see, at least on the PC version, we can have as many frames per second as we desire. One big thing that I thought was missing though is that I'd love to see an aim down the sight sensitivity slider in the game. It's something that we're used to nowadays having on FPS games on PC. I want to be able to tweak my sensitivity when aiming down the sight. It's very important for a PC gamer and I want to be able to pick between hold and click to aim down the sight. Again, something that's very important to have that choice. Speaking of which, let's talk FPS real quick. Like I said, the console version of the game is capped to 30 frames per second. Now that could change before release, but I very much doubt it. The version that we played was on PS4 Pros and that was 30 frames per second, and multiple sources confirmed that it was going to stay that way. Don't get me wrong here, I think there'll be a massive community on console, obviously the game's gonna sell like crazy, and I imagine that most diehard players won't really care, but I have to admit it was very disappointing to not see the game running at 60 frames per second on PS4 because once you see the PC version and how smooth it is and then you check out the PS4 version side by side it's just so noticeable. Also Destiny 2 director Luke Smith did an interview that said they've not yet committed to a PC release date but they're totally committed to making a PC build as great as they can 
take from that what you will but it doesn't directly mean that it will release after the console version on september the 8th but it may i'm expecting a couple of weeks let's hope this isn't going to be a couple of months it also appears that the game is not using dedicated servers even on PC. It uses a pretty complex peer-to-peer -peer system, but it will not have dedicated servers. And in a game in 2017 like this, with the kind of budget it has, that's pretty surprising to me. It's something I think that PC players have come to expect. Destiny 1, as you know if you played it, had a lot of lag problems in PvP Crucible. And while they say that they've made big changes to the technical aspect to eliminate lag, I was definitely hoping and expecting dedicated servers for this game. And I think that it may throw up a few problems in the future. We'll see. Of course, when it comes to PvE, so stuff like strikes and raids and general exploration, it really doesn't matter on the server type as long as you've got a decent host. So let's talk about some of the new content specifically. Strikes are back, of course they are, and they're all new. The strike that we got to play at the event was called the Inverted Spire, and it offered up some new mechanics, some cool moments, and honestly, it was really enjoyable to play. I really hope that the rest of the strikes have that same level of creativity because if I do have one criticism of the original Destiny is that some strikes could become a bit of a chore and a grind and weren't that interesting. Time will tell of course if this ends up being the same way in Destiny 2. I hope that they can maintain that level of polish and creativity throughout. So talking of chores, exploring planets, you had to do this for resources, public events and patrols in the original game, but really for the most part there wasn't that much to explore. The planets didn't feel like they were a living place and you had no real reason to go down to them and just look around to find things. That's now changing. Planets will now offer a real sense of exploration with interesting things around each corner. Planets will have outposts and even NPCs that will give you side quests as well as something brand new called called adventures. These are side missions that offer you something different such as hunting down treasure maps, discovering something called lost sectors and fighting bosses to gain treasure chests. It offers up something new in terms of exploration and gives you a real reason to head down to the planets and just look around for a bit. Speaking of which there are now of course brand new planets in the game, Io, Nexus, Titan and Earth's European Dead Zone. Oh, and no longer do you need to go to orbit to switch between planets or activities. You can now do that directly from the game director, as it's called, without heading back to space. Something that Destiny players have wanted for a very long time. So what about PvP then? I know that PvP is a massive part of Destiny. And of course the Crucible is back with the game modes that you love. Trials is making a return and we got to play a brand new attack defend game mode called Countdown. One team attacks and one team defends. There are two points to defend, A or B, and the attacking team must get a player to one of these points and arm an explosive. The defensive team of course must stop them. This is an elimination based mode so once you're dead you stay dead for the rest of that round until either team is fully eliminated or the explosive is blown up. You do, however, get one revive token, so you can be revived once in the round if you get killed, but then you need to be a bit more careful. I really enjoyed this new game mode countdown because it brings something different to Destiny. It's almost like search and destroy, but where any player can arm the explosive. I can see it being a popular mode, and it's certainly going to bring in some tactics online. PvP modes are now also all 4v4, even Trials, so Trials used to be 3v3 and standard Crucible modes were 6v6, but now they've both been balanced to 4v4 across the board. This does pose a small issue though for me. Strikes are 3 players, PvP is 4v4 and Raids are 6. It just means that you're constantly changing player counts to do different activities, something that I'm not really a fan of. And also, I'd love if there were some bigger game modes in the PvP, maybe 6 on 6, because of course I think a lot of us nowadays have way more than three other friends that we play games with, so you might have to kind of split up your squad every now and again. You can still expect the same three classes in the game. No new ones have been announced so far. So we've got Warlock, Titan and Hunter. Each class has a new super ability. Warlocks get a sword based special called the Dawnblade, which can be used as melee or can rain down firebolts from above. Titans get the Sentinel, which is the kind of Captain America shield because that's basically what it is. A shield that can be either used defensively or you can fling it at enemies to take down anyone in its path. Hunters then get the Arc Strider, which lets you summon a staff that you can use to melee and stun any enemies in your vicinity. And you could argue that there hasn't really been much change here and maybe a new class would have been added, but perhaps it wouldn't work with the lore of the game and where the story has picked up from. But I think we'll definitely see new classes 
as more content is released. Weapon slots have changed as well. Now of course there are a ton of brand new weapons and brand new exotics that everyone will be clambering for, but the way that you use those weapons has now changed. Now you get two primary weapon slots. One of those is a kinetic weapon only, and the second is an elemental slot. So I can have a hand cannon with no elemental damage in one slot, and say an auto rifle with void damage in the other slot, and I can now flick between both of them. I could have two rifles if I wanted, or whatever combo I can think of, even using one of the slots for a secondary pistol. And then the third slot is now for power weapons, which are snipers, shotguns, rocket launchers, etc. That changes the way that you use weapons up quite a bit, especially in Crucible, but it seems to be a change most players at the event were happy with. Destiny 2 will also offer clan support, so all of you raiders that spend so much time trying to organise yourself to raid each night are now going to have a much easier time of it. Join a clan that suits you, and as for being part of the clan you'll still get rewards. Destiny is also bringing with it guided games, and that's a system whereby a single player can join up with other players to play raids or nightfalls etc, something that wasn't possible in Destiny 1 without a full party of people that you knew. Destiny 2 wants to make sure that if you're playing on your own or with a group then you can still play all of the content with no boundaries. In Destiny 1 some players just didn't get around to doing some of the raids because they simply couldn't get enough friends together to do it. As well as all of the juicy multiplayer stuff there's also a full campaign, longer and more involving apparently than in the first game. Many people would agree that the original campaign in Destiny 1 was a huge letdown. In fact during development of the game there was a lot of chopping and changing of the story and that really showed in the final release, it was very lacklustre. No cohesion of the story whatsoever and no real cinematic moments meant that it fell flat. For Destiny 2 though, they've really taken it to the next level. The story revolves around the Cabal Redguard, a faction of the Cabal led by their leader Dominus Gaul. He feels that the power the Traveller gave belongs to him and he isn't very happy. The story is very cinematic driven and it promises a way more in-depth story and character development and in the story mission that I played called Homecoming, I think it was definitely a strong first impression of the campaign. There was a fantastic cinematic preceded by our Guardian trying to protect the tower from the Cabal invasion. It felt and looked great and I think this time around the campaign will be much more worthy of your time. Overall I was impressed with the short time that I spent playing Destiny 2, especially with the PC version. Even if it's not that far away from the original game, I think that it stepped forward a lot in its content, in its levels and its exploration and what seems to be much more creative missions. I expect the raids will be very good considering last gen consoles are now a thing of the past, there's no more limitations there. Of course PC is what I aim to play Destiny on right now. It's really, really fun playing at a high frame rate and using a mouse to aim rather than the controller but I need to see gameplay with an improved field of view and a few more PC specific settings to get really excited about it and of course dedicated servers I think that's a big mistake not having those for the PC version but we'll see how good their system is. If it all comes together rightly then I can see Destiny 2 being an absolutely massive hit, especially on PC. I'm definitely going to spend a lot of time playing the PC version when it releases. It's not all rainbows and unicorns though, the PC version of the game still needs to be proven and the fact that the console version is still 30 frames per second in 2017 is a real surprise and that's a massive letdown for a lot of console gamers, not to mention the lack of dedicated servers like I said, again a really odd choice. That being said, I think the game will be fantastic and polished and if you like Destiny 1, I've got no doubt that you're going to thoroughly enjoy the sequel. So that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this early look at the PC version and general impressions of Destiny 2. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, I will be covering this game a lot more on my channel as we ramp up towards release as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.